What's interesting is that most of the stuff we consume today is produced elsewhere and is shipped to us and 90% of it is containerized. We know shockingly little about the conditions under which it's transported. Sometimes that doesn't matter if you've got a container load of t-shirts, who cares? Uh, but if you've got a container full of life-saving medicine, uh, food that we're gonna consume, it matters a lot. We're trying to understand what are the quality conditions in global supply chains and how can we give people better insight so that they can understand those risks and avoid them in the future. So we are very lucky to be partnered with Gavi, which is the Global Alliance for Vaccines and Immunization. It's a large public-private partnership. So Gavi has made these vaccines available at a lower price and more accessible, but the challenge remains getting the vaccines to kids, and that's a supply chain challenge. And most of these vaccines are cold chain, meaning they need to be kept between two degrees and eight degrees Celsius. And that's really hard when you're talking about moving a vaccine from a manufacturer on one part of the world to a child in a rural health facility in another part of the world. And what we're trying to do is be able to understand you know, what was that vaccine exposed to on its way from the manufacturer to the child, and then give healthcare workers the actionable insights they need to be able to decide whether that vaccine is worthy of giving to the child or needs to be discarded some of the mortality gains that we've had in the last several decades. A lot of it has been tied to vaccine preventable illnesses and how we've made progress in those areas. And for me working in the United States in particular, I've always taken it for granted that when I have a medication or a vaccine that a patient needs, it's gonna be safe and effective. The more I've looked at this problem, um, both from a, like a humanitarian lens and also just a scientific lens, you start to see that there are gaps in, in what we're doing and there's a lot of room for innovation. We have these conversations with folks in the global health community you know, we have vaccinated 100% of people in this area for measles, and then there's a measles outbreak. And the, the hypothesis is the vaccines you gave them actually were not potent anymore. And so the big push to get vaccines to all of these places throughout the world uh, was sort of the last 10 years. And now the push is we're getting them there, but let's make sure we're getting them there in a quality fashion. So we use a combination of sensing devices and intelligent software to give people insights into what happened to the product, both from a backward looking standpoint. So what happened to it? When did it happen? Where did it happen? Who's responsible? So, but we're also looking for trends and patterns in that data over time so we can help pinpoint uh, where risks are likely to occur and help you avoid them happening in the future. Growing up, I, I didn't have opportunity to have vaccines. I, I had measles when I was growing up, and I lost the younger sister of, of mine to measles. Making sure that people are receiving vaccines that can protect them, it's something that I think that I wanted to do. I want to make sure that every single kid in the world is having access to a potent vaccine. I want to help countries also prevent, uh, you know, loss of vaccines, because when you look at the cost of developing a vaccine, buying it, transporting it in the very stringent conditions, storing it in the cold rooms, and then to realize that at the end, these vaccines are wasted or not potent is not something that we can afford. Especially we have the technology that can do it, let's do it. I had the opportunity to travel to Senegal last summer when we started the project there. We traveled sort of through the health system to the regional level, the district and the health facility, which was really informative just to see how the vaccines would be traveling. Kind of we created that, that journey. For me, because I've always worked on the front lines, I'm most comfortable in remote distant clinics. And so I really liked being at the health facility level and interacting with the main person there. She's in charge of all the cold chain equipment, but she also is the only medical personnel. She's a nurse midwife, so she does everything from vaccinations to delivering babies. She's doing the job I did, plus 10 others. To think that maybe we could help make her job a little easier, give her a little sense of ownership and empowerment over her vaccines. In particular, we can't help with everything else, but hopefully that, you know, maybe we'd make it easier that she doesn't have to open the fridge every time she wants to check the temperature of her vaccines, or she could get some sort of feedback on her mobile app to tell her that everything was fine and she didn't have to worry about that. I just liked that idea of knowing like that her life would be a little bit easier um, by what we were doing. So what I love about Parcel is I can really draw a direct line between the work that I do every day and the impact that we're having. It's easy to say that you're making a difference in the world, but when you come into work and you see the direct impact of the product that you're using on vaccines, on safety of products that people are consuming, 
it makes it really fun to come into work. And it's not several levels of indirection of, I might be making a difference if these things happen and you know someone uses my product in this specific way to make their own product. At Parcel, we come to work and we say, this freezer, it, it went bad, and these vaccines would have also gone bad if not for our product. And that's pretty inspiring. I worked in the Obama administration at the U.S. Agency for International Development. There was this expression used throughout my career, which was ship and pray. And what that meant was we had a really hard time of understanding the quality of the goods by the time they got to their destination. When I left the administration, I just sort of found this unacceptable. In a world of the Internet of Things and cloud computing, uh, how are we leaving something so important to chance? And that's really what inspired us to develop a product uh, and a company that was really geared towards answering these really hard questions around what's happening to these sensitive products that are going to hard to reach populations and have real life-saving implications when they're delivered. 